gay men are not promiscuous. We just love the dick. <laughs> no, I shouldn't put that in. Hello everyone, happy, I don't know, exam period for you all. Exams have been really busy, I'm really busy, I'm really tired, but I'm gonna make this video because so many of you were so nice to have have commented on my other stuff and said that you liked it that I thought I would I would bring you another one. I got some weird comments on the shirt I was wearing last video, so I wore the penis shirt this time. Beep, beep, beep. But remember kids, genitals come in all shapes and sizes. Some are clearly clitoral, some are clearly penises. Some of them aren't, but they're all genitals and they can all do some smush in, so keep that in mind. Okay, we're starting this video off with a truth bomb. I know that you probably have already thought about this, um, but this is just to remind you or to bring it to light if you've never considered this. Would you date someone two years older than you? I myself would. Would I date someone 10 years older than me? Under very, very special circumstances, maybe. 20 years, probably a no-go. 30 years, 40, 50, 60, a hundred? Probably not. It's probably not healthy for you to be in a relationship with someone like that because they've lived a completely, they've lived another life in the space that you haven't. However, it's totally cool to be in love with Edward Cullen, the Salvatore brothers, Bill, um, Eric. It's fine to be in love with all of these people because they look 20 years old. Well, guess what? They're actually a hundred and something. You wouldn't date someone who looked a hundred and something, but you're fine dating someone who looks 20. Check yourself out for a fucking second there. That's some nasty ass shit. You need to check yourself. Dropping a truth bomb. A Venn diagram of healthy relationships and relationships with people that are a hundred years older than you is just two fucking circles. That's it. Don't do it. Why would you want to date a vampire? Why would you want to date a vampire? They suck blood. They literally are hungry for you. How is someone supposed to... <laughs> I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't find vampires romantic. I do not find them the, the thing for me. I find hot people attractive. And if, the, if, they're, if they're playing a vampire, I can, you know, push that aside. But I don't want a vampire. People who want vampires, like, I don't get it. Ugh, I'm all about the witches. If you can, like, fucking cast something. Mm. First question. I don't understand why people still say this. It's it's the stupidest. It is it's legitimately probably the most unintelligent like string of words I can imagine coming up with. It just it makes no sense. Aside from like being, you know, homophobic like ugh. If someone says it around me, I speak up. What is the question again? How much of a problem do you think it is? It is a big enough problem to say something. You know what, put your neck on the line, be a warrior of truth, and fucking shut that shit down. I'm okay with it, I'll support you. If someone's like, wow, dude, that was uncool, come talk to me, I'll pat you on the back, we can go out for ice cream, it's okay. Just fucking speak up. There's nothing wrong with speaking up. If you're uncomfortable saying something, I'm not gonna hate you for not saying something, but if you're just like mentally battling whether or not to say something, say something. Your, your chances are you're doing someone a favor. How should it be addressed? I'm a really, really, really bad person for this. I am. I, in my last video, uh, like I said, I, my, I normally give really, really sarcastic, snarky responses to people who actually mean it. But if you like the person and, and there's, there's, you know, like friendship there, just pull them aside afterward and be like, listen, maybe could you stop saying that? Yeah, just be real. I don't know. Homosexuality and promiscuity. First of all, I hate the word promiscuity. I hate it. Ugh. I just... Ugh. Let people fuck whoever they want to fuck. I don't understand why it has to be a dirty, nasty thing. Homosexuality, particularly gay men, are, are made out to be uh, pretty, pretty sluty. Why do I think that is? Through the history of time, I don't want to get all like, <laughs> on you, but uh, historically, Hypersexuality and promiscuity have been assigned to people that are generally socially unliked or unwanted. Um, you see this a lot throughout uh, black history. Women were often, uh, black women were often 
made out to be either like, you know, these black mammies that were like completely non-sexual or these Jezebels that were like, ooh, you know, hypersexual. And then black men were hypersexualized as well, which was a huge contributor toward the rape lynch syndrome. So, one, I think the reason that gay men are made to be promiscuous is because they are uh, a, a minority and, and they um, are going to be stigmatized because of that. Two, I think generally whenever it, uh, sexual rights are, are fought for and are uh, brought to the table as something that's important to people, the people that fight for them are made to be hypersexual as well. Some of the gay guys I've talked to feel like the image of the, the gay man doesn't really represent them. You know, oftentimes the gay men are, are symbolically white, considerably heteronormative, or, you know, fabulous and promiscuous. So, that being said, is that image socializing gay men to be more promiscuous? Is it like one of those, is it a mirror or is it uh, a product and blah blah blah? I don't know. I think a lot of these questions are going to be like, I don't know, but here's some food for thought. <laughs> Yikes. Ooh. Oh boy. Um, I'm not gonna advise you put your dick in a vacuum. I, I don't see it going over well. Like, no, I, I honestly, I'm trying to think of like situations in which that might go over well, and I don't see any. One, even if you get it in there, like, is it gonna be the same size as your penis? Are you gonna be able to get enough friction going in that whole thing to, to bring you to orgasm or anything? Probably not. And if it does, you just came in your vacuum. Unless it's like one of those wet dry vacs, that's gonna mess stuff up. No, don't put your dick in a vacuum. If you wanna like experiment with suction and you want to, to see what that's like, like go buy a cock pump, go buy something that you can explore that with, but like an industrial or like home-based vacuum, I gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Unless you really know what you're doing with the vacuum, I'm gonna go against it. Do not put your bits in a, in a vacuum. Don't. Hi, another heartless bitch. I'm gonna say don't fake it. I'm gonna say don't wait around for feelings to, to genuinely happen. My philosophy has always been that you deserve and your partner deserves to be in a relationship where you're both crazy about each other. If you have to force yourself to be crazy about that person, you're gonna end up resenting that person. Don't fucking get in a relationship and try and make it work. Now, if it's not working, get the fuck out. There's gonna be somebody else out there. There's no sense in wasting your time and trying to convince yourself otherwise. Go find somebody who's great for you. That other person's gonna want someone that's great for them. You're gonna be great. You're gonna be happy. I doubt you're heartless. You're probably just trying to find someone that works for you. Um, and when you find that person, you'll realize that you're not a heartless bitch. So, um, just keep looking. Stay true to that, that heartless heart you got there. Okay, that's all the questions I have for today. I'll be posting another video with questions soon. So, let me know what questions are in your head and maybe I'll be able to add them to the next video. Um, you can email them to me at sexwithspencer at gmail.com or comment below with them, inbox me on YouTube with them, inbox me on Facebook with them, or the most anonymous easy way for you to do it is to go to my Tumblr, sexwithspencer.tumblr.com and post it in my ask box um, and it would be completely anonymous. So, I look forward to hearing your questions soon and I will see you all next week probably.